for this. Welcome to this session of the Jacksonville Oswald Board Development and Training Conference. I'm Carmela George with the City of Jacksonville Community Affairs. Um, and now I'd like to introduce our, this session, Financial Management Tools. Natasha Davis, standing beside me, is the Executive Director of Quality Enhancement for Nonprofit Organizations housed within USCW. Through her role at Keno, Natasha uses her over 15 years of accounting and nonprofit experience to help nonprofit organizations accomplish their mission. Natasha has experience as a nonprofit staff member, board member, and consultant. While serving on the board of directors for the Full Belly Project, she helped lead the organization from a, a small nonprofit operating in a friend's backyard to a fully functioning international development organization with global recognition and support. Here now, Natasha Davis. Or she took my notes. It's almost a disaster. If I go unscripted, it just doesn't need to be recorded. So welcome everyone, thank you for being here. How many of you are so excited about anything finance training related? Like this is gonna be the exci most exciting <laughs> workshop you've ever been in. How many of you have been in my workshop before? Okay, so you guys can tell them this isn't your normal finance workshop. So today we're gonna talk about some of the finance, financial management tools, if I can make this thing work. Maybe it'll come on in a second, we'll see. So the three things we're gonna talk about today is first, financial responsibilities of a nonprofit board. Second, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you a budget variance report. Yeah, um, thank you. Which is a tool that you can use to track your progress. And then third, that I'm gonna show you how to use some dashboards, which is another tool that you can use to, to be able to communicate your financial standing to your non-financial board members. So the first, who can tell me? They won't let me do anything now. Um, what is the responsibility of a nonprofit board? Who can tell me? Yay. To raise funds, isn't it? To like raise, what? M raise funds uh, <laughs> with the 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 deal like how the the organization runs like they they help with management and stuff and fundraise yes fiscal responsibility yes it's both what else what was the question again what is the responsibility of a nonprofit board yes I would say to ensure that the mission and the vision of the organization is maintained and carried out right? yes. So the board is the legal guardian of the organization. So who owns the organization? Thank you. Who owns a nonprofit organization? Who can guess? Is it the founder? 
Is it the, the board owns it? I don't know who owns it, I, but the board's responsible. Right. But I'm not sure, because we're a nonprofit, but I don't know who, who owns us. So Our speak. donors. Your community. Right. So yeah. with, a, with a nonprofit, your community owns you. So the founder doesn't own the nonprofit. The board doesn't own the nonprofit. They're the stewards of the nonprofit's resources. But the community that you serve is who owns the nonprofit. So everything that you do has to be in the community's best interest. So that's why it's so important as board members to be strong fiscal stewards of the money because it's not your money, it's your community's money. <coughs> um, so the board is the legal guardian of the organization and its resources and is responsible for the organization's current and future welfare. So they have, you ha how many are board members in the room? Raise your hand. Okay, and how many are staff? Okay, so as board members, it's your ethical responsibility to steward these community resources. And we're gonna go over some of this more in more detail in the next session, but I wanted to go over, introduce it now because it's so important that board members understand this. So you have directors and liabilities insurance, a lot of you with your organizations, and some board members say, oh, well, I have that insurance, I'm okay. I don't have to worry about anything. Well, this business judgment rule says, if you have exercised good faith judgment, you're generally protected from liability to the organization and its members if you follow these three things. So how many of you have seen these three things before? Duty of care, duty of loyalty, and duty of obedience. Good job. So duty of care is paying attention, making sure you're not asleep at the wheel. You know what's going on with your organization. Duty of loyalty, the organization comes first. And duty of obedience, obeying all of the laws and the rules, your bylaws, IRS laws, all of that. So from a financial standpoint, what can you do as a board member to practice duty of, a, of care? What's one thing you can do? Look at the budget, financial reporting. Right, right. What's one thing you can do to practice duty of loyalty that has to do with finances? Ask questions. I don't, maybe, oh. well, I would ask questions more if I had a, you need to ask questions to know what. Right. The loyalty part would be to give. That that's, I would think that you would, if you're going to ask somebody to give, then you need to give too. Mm-hmm. If you're making a decision, yes. I think you should eliminate conflict of interest. Yes. So if you're making a decision, whose best interest are you making that decision for when you're sitting around that board table? Is it your friend who's the director that really is getting ready to foreclose on their house so they really need a raise? Or is it the organization? It should be the organization. Correct. So that's what we're talking about with that duty of loyalty. <coughs> What's something financial with the duty of obedience? Where does that come into play when you're talking about finances? Yes. IRS. Oh, um, go ahead. IRS. What? IRS. what about them? Stay away from those people? Yeah, that too. Obey the rules of the IRS. Right, yeah. correct. Exactly. So th those are. You've got to do all those three things. You're not just exempt because you have insurance. You've got to be doing those three things. So we wanted to show you a couple of different reports than what we showed you last year and the year before. And we went over the budget variance report a little bit last year. So how many of you have a budget for your organization? Good. How many times a year do you look at that budget in your board meeting? Every Once month. Every month. Every month. Every yes. month. Okay. How many of you look at it once you've approved it and then you don't see it again until next budgeting session? You don't believe it. There's a lot that do that, so you're not by yourself if you're one of those and scared to raise your hand. Um, what columns does your budget have when you look at it every month? Yes. Uh, uh, monthly total and variance, as well as a year-to-date total and variance, and then um, our actual budget, annual budget. Okay. Some of them just have what you spent. Some of them just have the two columns. So with your report that has all of those columns, when you say variance, that's the number variance, right? Yes. So when you look at that number, let's say you have salaries 
and you have overspent your salaries by 20%, and you see that variance number on that report, do you know why you've overspent that, that money by just looking at that report? We also have a notes <coughs> I'm sorry. I to add. Okay. So we have to explain. Right. If there's a significant. So how many of you have a notes column in there? You do? Have you been through this training before? Okay. So yeah, that's what makes it the variance report. A lot of organizations, for profit and nonprofit, stop right here. And so when you have this in front of you, if you don't have that explanation section, I have to stay over here because that camera. If you don't have that explanation section, you're looking at this and you know that there's a variance, but you don't know why. So what happens when you get to a board meeting and you don't have that explanation column? There's two things that can happen. What's one? Well, for us, it was actually making our board meetings longer. That was the biggest thing. And, we, and so that's why they had the note column mm -hmm. that was mentioned. So it actually sped up the board meetings. Actually, and the material was sent prior to the board meeting so that we could review it. Right. And so any questions we had, we were able to write them down and, you know, so. Right. So if, if you don't have those notes, like what he was saying, you're, one of two things will happen. Either you're looking and you're saying, why are these numbers different? And you have this big, long conversation and debate over what's the sales tax figure now and what's the FICA tax? Is that supposed to be 7% or 6%? And then you spend all this time. Is that what you want to be talking about in a board meeting? No. Especially if your board meeting's at night and you're hungry and you want to get home to your family. Do you want to be discussing dollars and cents and pennies and you know whether or not you use the right vendor to buy tires for the bus? That's not what you want to do. So this report, just like Robert was saying, is it allows you to see this and beforehand, when you get it beforehand, and so you can ask questions. You already know, and you, you may say, you know what, they miscalculated the grant payment. I'm good with that. We're still going to get it, so, so it's fine. I don't have any questions. Or you may say, why did we miscalculate the grant payment? But you could send an email to the director or to the board president before the meeting because you got this ahead of time and say, you know, are we doing something to make sure that doesn't happen again? Was it something with the funder? You can ask those questions so you're not spending all this time in a board meeting because you want your board meetings to be something that people look forward to going to. You want to make decisions and have discussions and feel like you're making a difference. You don't want to be disputing over little things. So the other thing that could happen if you don't have the explanation, this thing it just becomes all numbers. How many of you have board members or staff that when they look at their financial reports, they just have a glaze over their eyes just, how many of you are that person? <laughs> <laughs> so when you don't have that explanation, sometimes people don't understand the, they don't have the finance background. They don't understand the numbers enough to ask a question because they're afraid they're gonna ask a stupid question. And there are no stupid questions, right? Well, I kind of disagree. There are some. I've been asked them. But most of the time, they're not. When you're on a board, ask questions. That's the most important thing you can do is ask questions. That's your job to ask questions. It is not your job to assume somebody else knows what they're doing because they probably do not. If you have that question, someone else does or they should. But if you don't have that explanation, then you're going to get that glaze. And then you're not going to discuss it at all. So then where this variance where... Um, that 65000 is not received, everybody assumes, well, they must know what they're doing. I'm sure they wouldn't just let that money get away. So you just go on to the next thing, and you don't discuss, wait a minute, how are we going to make up this $65,000? But if you have this explanation, it makes it more user-friendly. So just like if you're using the computer, you're using a software package. If it's more user-friendly and you can understand it, you're going to do more with it. You're going to play around with it. You're going to you know, ask more questions and experiment. But if that, that program is not user friendly, it's gonna scare the heck out it's gonna scare the heck out of me and I'm gonna say, ooh, if I touch something, I'm gonna break this thing for sure. So this makes it user friendly and inviting so you have more information and you can ask those questions. Does that make sense to everyone? Okay. Is this a tool some of you are using it. For those that are not using this, is this a tool that you think would benefit your organization? Mm -hmm. cool. I use one similar uh -huh. I use year to date and percentage of budget, mm -hmm. what's been used. You put that months. explanation column? Mm -hmm. Cool. Good job. 
All right, the other's dashboards. How many of you use dashboards? Okay. <coughs> How many of you heard of dashboards? All right, good. So a dashboard is a way to, it doesn't have to be financial, but for today's purposes, we're, that's what we're going to talk about. It's a way to communicate your financial position in pictures. <coughs> What's easier to understand than pictures? And again, thinking about that user-friendly, making sure everybody can understand it. So I have a bachelor's degree in accounting, and I tell, you know, I have some friends that are CPAs, and they ha I was not going to sit for a two-day test. I just didn't care how much money I was going to make. That was not going to happen. So I'm not a CPA, but I have friends that are CPAs, and they get irritated with me sometimes because I say, it does not matter how much you know if you cannot communicate that to your clients. Mm -hmm. If you can't communicate their financial position to them, you can know everything in the world. It doesn't make a difference. And same with, I work at a university, so I work with researchers. Your research doesn't matter diddly if you can't apply it to real life situations. That would make me the most popular person in a faculty meeting, but that's the truth. So you want to think about that with your, your information and your financial information because you're being transparent not just to yourselves internally but also to your community because whose resources are you stewarding? Yeah. Right. So you want to be responsible to them. So here's an example. And the small print doesn't matter. What I'm, this is an actual dashboard I created years ago. What does this tell you? You don't have to see the names, but what does this, this chart tell you or that graph at the top? Is it increase? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Going down. Right. Mm -hmm. See, you don't even have to read that title. You know exactly <coughs> what's going on. We have a downward trend. And unless that's expenses, we need to talk about it, right? Mm -hmm. See how easy that was? So right here, what is that telling you without knowing the words? Mm. You're increasing. <coughs> yep. And so are the expenses. Yeah, because you, you can see that. But you can also see this color is not increasing with that color. Mm -hmm. So that's not matching. So regardless of what these two things are actually are, you know there's a question to ask. Mm -hmm. What's this telling you? Expenses. Yeah, where our expenses are. Yep, or where your revenues are. So you can tell where are the chunks of money coming in, where are the chunks of money going out. And then that one's too small. So I'm going to go over some of the ways that you can use dashboards. One is for goal setting and tracking. Now, who likes to know when they set a goal that they're on target? Who likes to celebrate that? How many of you celebrate in your board meetings? Like do a touchdown dance or anything like that? Come on now. You we gotta get a little crazy. High five. High five? We high five That's not good enough. We're gonna have to do a touchdown dance. That's gonna be a requirement. Mm. So in our class that we teach, nonprofit leadership experience, I actually have the students do touchdown dances when they get the idea that we're going after. And they are so embarrassed and they can't stand it, but they like it afterwards. So if you wanna celebrate those victories, we beat our fundraising goal that's not a small task, especially in a small town. You beat that fundraising goal, you need to have a dance or something. So this is a great way to do that if you're a little more conservative and you don't want to do the dance. But you can at least say, hey, look, our assets are, are steady. For this organization that I actually did this on, the assets being steady was a huge improvement because you saw that chart before where the assets were going down. This is what they changed to because we started using these charts. And then they didn't know exactly how all these numbers came to be, the, the non-finance people on the board, but they did know that they wanted that line to either be straight or going up. And that was something they could understand mm -hmm. every single month. And if that line started going down, they understood that they need to start asking questions and making decisions. Right here, this is a color-coded way. So some of you have grants. You don't really know when to put those grants on your financials. They, until you get that award letter, you can't put them on your financials. But you, you need to know as a board, what grants have we applied for? Well, as a board member, you may have no idea. You've got $200,000 worth of grants out there, but you may, it may be a shot in the dark for 90% of those. But you need to know that, right? So this is a way to track those. So you can color code. And you can use like your own colors for your organization. I just use simple ones for this. So this PPD grant, that was a shot in the dark. We probably won't get it, but if we do, we'll, it'll be icing on the cake. 
this United Way here in the orange, we may get it. They've seemed a little supportive, but we're not real sure, but it's, it's not a shot in the dark. We've done some research. These yellow ones, we are pretty positive we're gonna get those. We've submitted it. We've had great conversations with the program officers. We're just waiting on the award letter. And these green ones, we've got the award letter. This is money in the bank, high five. So that way you know of all of this money, this 120 is what we can actually depend on and we can start contingency planning for this in the yellow. But that color coding lets anybody know green is go and good and red is stop and, and bad. So that makes it easy. Any questions? All right, another is for planning. So this is your, ca your cash flow, money in the bank. So you can use this to see, and you're gonna have your fundraiser in January, and then it goes down, and then you have your next fundraiser in April, and then you start spending down. What kind of decision do you need, do you need to be making in May and June? What do you need to be talking about as a board? Next your next fundraiser, I think. <laughs> how are we gonna get money in, or how are we gonna stop spending money? Because th what this is showing you is the difference between what's in the bank and what's, what's coming out of the bank. So this is your, ba your bank balance, essentially. So you either need to slop, stop the bleed on the expenses, delay some of your expenses, or you need to bring in more revenue. But anyone can understand that. You don't have to be a finance major to understand that. Here's your expense breakdown. So this could be a way to plan. You know that 60% of your expenses are payroll expenses. So if you, if you don't get that $65,000 grant, where are you more than likely gonna have to cut? Why? Because that's the majority of your expense. Right, that's where you have room to cut. So this chart helps anybody figure that out. And you can do that for your revenues too. So you can see where are our revenues coming from. And if all of them are coming from one place, do we need to make some decisions about that? Yes. You use Excel? Yes. Okay. Yep, I do. Get the numbers from QuickBooks and, and then do this in Excel. So what, what I did when I did these a while back was I had an Excel sp spreadsheet and I had one tab that had all of the data in it. And then I had other tabs that had each of these charts and they would automatically pull from the data I put in that top sheet. So you try to make it as easy as possible when you're updating See, it. See, that's what I've asked, why they don't, the folks are not in, why they don't do that. It's well, it's time consuming to set it up. So setting this up and making those, because you've got to decide what do we want to focus on. You can't have every chart there is, because mm -hmm. then that's going to be overwhelming, right? So you want to decide what do we as a board and as an organization want to focus on. And making those decisions and then setting this up to begin with is time intensive, labor intensive. So that's why a lot of people are um, reluctant to do that. Once it's set up, it's easy maintenance, mm -hmm. but the setup is labor intensive. So on that, on that note for just a brief second, if that's something you're interested in doing with your organization, let me know and go on our Kino website. We have students that have to do projects for organizations that have a deliverable. And one of those projects could be setting up dashboards. And we've had students that have set that up for organizations and even trained the board on how to read it. So if that's something you're interested in doing, go to our website. Our information's all over the place here. Contact me, and we'll see if we can get help for you, OK? All right, monitoring. So the planning is how to make decisions in the future. This is just how we're doing. So we plan to have no more than 20% admin, and we don't want these two to be more than 30% put together. So we can see 22 plus 20 is 42. That may be a problem. So we need to figure out how are we gonna cut some of these expenses going forward. And then the monitoring, how, are, how is our income versus our expenses? So we know that in May, June, July, and August, our expenses are more than our income. We're able to get away with that because we've got a lot of income in January. That may be when we get a lot of grants or those things. This may also be a good planning tool. Maybe we want to make sure we have more steady income instead of just relying on January and April. We want to do something that's going to have more continuous, 
steady income. Maybe you want to set up a monthly giving campaign. Maybe you want to do something like speaking engagements to civic organizations every other month, something like that. And then again, the celebrating success. So this is the boring thermometer that everybody uses. You can go online and Google fundraising thermometer and pop this sucker right on in your Excel spreadsheet. You can make something creative. What's your organization do? Ours? Uh-huh. Um, we have a apartment units that we rent out, mm -hmm. so that's what we manage. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you did a fundraising campaign, you can even do houses and say for every house is every $500 that was raised or $100 and you stack your houses up and your goal is to be there or you could have one big frame and every time you get a certain level of donation you can put the door on the house you can put the window on the house and that's a fun way to celebrate your success and then you're sitting around the room and you're like man we're $50 away from getting that door on the house I, I can probably do $50 because I want that door on the house you'd be surprised at how ridiculously much you want to put that door on that house when it's in front of you <laughs> and then your fundraising efficiency you know you can look at that so this was our fundraiser that we had and we spent we had 77 percent of each dollar so 77 cents out of each dollar that was that was donated went straight into our programs and that's a success or depending on what your goal is some have a much lower goal but you can celebrate those things and say, hey, good job. So you don't want to use this to always beat yourself up about what you need to improve. That's a very important thing to be thinking of as a board. You always want to improve. But you also want to pat yourself on the back for the good things that you're doing. And you want to make sure that you're patting everybody else on the back for the good things they're doing. Because who wants to go into a meeting where somebody tells you you're wrong, wrong, wrong? You've got to do better, got to do better every time. You don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. So you want to have meetings where everybody wants to be there and they want to work together and have those discussions together. <laughs> oh man, I'm talking way faster than I thought I was. All right, so now, since I have so much more time, you get to ask whatever questions you want to ask about financial management tools. So does anybody have questions for me about those? 2.15, I think. Is this PowerPoint available? It will be available. They'll, they will put... I think Carmela's putting it on the website, is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm sure they'll be able to get it out. Yes. On which website? Probably Jacksonville website. I would think. The city of Jacksonville. I can find out and announce it in the next session. Thank you. Yeah. And when? When do they plan on having this available? I'll find out and announce okay. it in the next session and when everybody's in there. I didn't ask that part. <laughs> Another thing. Oh, whoopsie. So on the table, and you'll be given these as well, is a calendar of all the Kino trainings that are coming up this spring, so between now and May. And it has the county that the, that the training's going to be in, so you'll know which ones are going to be in Onslow County. And the registrations are open. You can register through United Way for the Onslow County trainings. And you can go ahead and register now if you want to. Um, we'll be having the responsible board governance and financial accountability. So the financial accountability training that we do is nine hours. It's three days that are three hours each. And we usually do it, uh, we're doing it April, what day is that going to be? Tuesday. So we'll have it three Tuesdays in a row from three to six. So that way you're only getting out of work a couple hours early, but you're still home in time for dinner. Okay, so April, what day does that start on April what? The first, the eighth, and the fifteenth. It's in Wilmington. No, that's in Onslow. That'll be oh, here. Onslow? That'll be at Coastal Carolina Community College. So that first session, we talk about budgeting. What's the proper way to budget? Who should you ha include at the table? How do you manage your budget? How do you look at that budget variance report and pull out numbers that are that you should be asking questions about? The second day is going over your your financial reports, your um, statement of financial position, which is in the for-profit world a balance sheet your statement of financial activities, which in the for-profit world is your profit and loss statement. So you go over those, and then we teach you how to pick out, again, you have all these numbers that so you want to glaze over, but we can show you how you can look at just a couple of those numbers on each report and know, oh, we need to have a question, or we're right on target. So we go through those reports and let you know what each of those lines are, what that means, how to, how to assess that, 
And then the third day we go over dashboards and creating your own dashboard. Now I can tell you this training was designed to not be a snoozer financial training. That's my biggest pet peeve is to go, I have two. One is to go to a training and have more questions than I came in with. And two is to be bored to tears and somebody talking to me the whole time. So, um, so when you're talking about creating those dashboards, you will create one. You would bring your computer so you could sit there and create it on the Oh, no, we, we got funner ways to do that. So, funner ways, but my, that's, that's wonderful. But if you can't do it after you get back, <laughs> <laughs> well, we may, we may think about that. So, we have on flip charts, and you'll work with the team. So, we, we would like for you to have more than one person from your organization attend. So, ideally, your director, your finance person, and the treasurer of your board. That's, your, that's the ideal situation. Any board member can attend. We want all board members, any staff, but th that's a real good, if you can only get three people, those are the good three people. So everybody's on the same page with what they're doing. And we have breakout sessions, so you can sit together, and during these breakout sessions, you can have conversations and decide together, oh man, we need to change this report, or we need to start looking at that report. And you'll go home each day with homework, so we'll have, um, a made up organization set of financials so that everybody's talking about the same thing throughout the class. But then when you go home, we ask you, okay, find this with your organization. Look at your organization's budget. What do you need to change? What do you need to look for? There are questions you should ask. Then you come back the next week and, and you can ask us those questions. You can say, this is what we found. You know, this is what we want to change. Then we learn something else that builds on that. Then you go back and look at your organization's financials and things when you go home and you can come back with questions the third day and then with the dashboard we'll draw out what it would look like talk about why you chose those different charts and then you have something to go to work with and then I am waiting for funding now to hopefully be able to have students that will come to this training with everyone and they get trained the same time you do and they can help create those dashboards at the end. I'm waiting on that. I gotta get that grant award letter before I can put it in the green. <laughs> but I, I usually get my way, so I think I will. <laughs> this, is a good, that's, that's, this is good. Yeah, so we've done this twice in Wilmington and it's been um, the highest scored training that we've done and the most requested training that we've done and it's the one that sells out every time we do it. And we only allow 25 people. And the reason why is because we wanna make sure that all of your questions are answered. We wanna make sure that we have a small enough amount that we can have really good conversation, that we can talk about issues, and that also that you feel safe discussing your organization. So everybody signs a confidentiality agreement in the beginning so that whatever is discussed in the room stays in the room. And with 25 people, you feel a lot more comfortable than if you had 80 people in the room. And then I, we can't give you the one-on-one -on -one attention if there's 80. So that, it's a smaller training for a reason. So who, after, after looking at all of this, who would like to implement dashboards in their organization? I use a dashboard on some things uh -huh. um, with our with our contracts. So on which ones are um, different people that we have contracts with and mm -hmm. what type. I use that, but that was created through um, the public transportation division, so it was easy to put in our stats, and then we and we can get that. But mm -hmm. I find it real helpful instead of just using percentages because you can see the pie. You can see it. Mm -hmm. it, it. It jumps out at you. Yep. So what do you, what would you want to put on your dashboard? On on ours, mm -hmm. um, for example, there were numbers of. Uh, I had an issue with the young lady at the uh, police department. She put together phone calls, nine one one phone calls from the property, and so it was my idea last year to say, hey, I want to know the numbers from last year. What were the calls for? And so when I got the numbers, she used the Excel spreadsheet. Um, but God bless her soul. I said, you know, I looked at it and I said, no, this is, you know, I want her to just give me the raw data mm -hmm. and I'd rather do the sorting myself. Mm -hmm. And that turned out to be an issue because I'm volunteering mm -hmm. and I don't have a lot of time. And plus I didn't have a lot of experience. So I said, okay, wait a minute. I need some training. I need to know how to put these numbers together mm -hmm. in a proper way and to be able to and, and put it in a way to be able to communicate it to the rest of the board members and um, our management company. So. So that's something you could use for planning and for tracking. Yes, yes. So you could see the numbers are going down. We implemented this new policy, and since then the numbers are going down. Like I use an example, we mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> we, we want to know this, the cameras. We actually put in some nice cameras in the front that, that record everything 24/7. So I said, okay, we need to know if we're getting the return on our money. 
so that we spent this money, I think, what, $70,000, $80,000 on these cameras. Well, we, I want to be able to see the numbers month by month instead of at the end of the year saying, okay, break-ins went up, but we paid this money for these cameras. We voted to, you know, approve to you know, spend the money for these cameras. So something is wrong. Mm -hmm. So, And well, you'd rather know that midway than at the end, yes, right? right? So using these dashboards and that budget variance report allows you to make changes midway instead of having to wait till the end. Mm -hmm. Who else? Raise their hand about wanting to implement a dashboard. What would you like to show on there? I like to have a graphic representation besides the numbers of where we presently are mm -hmm. and where we want to be. Right. Because there's a huge delta there. And if we would put it in something very colorful, mm -hmm. it would be, uh, it would catch your attention. Mm -hmm. Instead of having that spreadsheet, yeah, I know, we need more money. We all need more money. <laughs> right. <clears throat> but I want to get your attention. Right. Good. What would you put on yours? Well, we, at our line item, we clump all our programs under one title. Mm -hmm. And I would like that broken down into a dashboard. Okay. Know, under individual programs for expenses. Okay. So what kind of chart would you use? Uh, I was thinking the pie chart. Okay. So the show the percentage of your expenses for each program. Another good thing may be to use the bar graph and have your revenues for each program versus your expenses. I don't know what your program is. Is it something where you have revenues for a specific program or you get revenues and you divvy it up yourself? It's both. Both. Just to make things as complicated as possible. Of course. That's how it works. <laughs> <laughs> if you do have grants that are for a specific program, or you have a fundraiser that funds a specific program, it's good to look at what are the revenues versus the expenses for that program. Because it may be, even with grants, it may be that it costs more to monitor that grant to do all that grant reporting than what you're actually getting, especially with government grants. There have been times where I've been a finance manager <coughs> and I've turned down grants because when I found out the reporting that was involved, we were going to have to hire another part-time person 20 hours a week to do all of that reporting. And we weren't getting enough money to cover that salary mm -hmm. plus to do the program. And so that was, that was a grant that I couldn't have. You know, we couldn't afford to have. Now, if we, had, we could have had another fundraiser to cover that difference of the cost, but do you want a fundraiser to cover the difference of the cost of a program like that? So you've got to make those decisions. But that's something that you could do is compare those two. Um, I'd like to share an experience mm -hmm. right quick. Um, we're, I'm with Onslow United Transit System, and we just happen to be a nonprofit doing transit than being a county department. So instead of being a 5013C, we're a 5014C. Mm -hmm. So we don't actually go out and do fundraising or anything, but we get grant money. But this year, I had something interesting happening, and knowing what the threshold is, is $500,000 that you would receive in federal grants to have to do a yellow book audit. I think we all understand that when we're, where we are in our nonprofits. Um, however, this year I received three physical year wor years worth of vehicles. Not thinking anything of it because it was NCDOT's problem. They just didn't get the RFPs out. So this year I received vehicles for FY 1011, 1112, and 1213 this past year. That threw me over the $500,000 threshold. Uh, we have always just done a compilation and gone into NC grants. I don't know if any of you have to do that or not. And put in your receipts and schedules if you're under that, that threshold. Well, lo and behold, when I went to NC DOT grants in the middle of December to finish up my stuff because you have six months to do it, and I, our CPA came and we did everything, Onslow United Transit System had received $623,000. That threw us over. $123,000, which will never happen again. <laughs> and that's the truth, because I only get $214,000, $185,000 of that from the state, plus um, for vehicles, and we don't ever get that much money in vehicles. So uh, we have to provide a yellow book audit. Now that yellow book audit, as y'all all know who have to do one, is due nine months after the end of your fiscal year, which would be March 30th. I did not find out that we needed a yellow book audit until December, middle of December. So you know what happened in December. We had Christmas, <laughs> nobody works, and this is due. They don't grant extensions. 
Found that out too. <laughs> so um, for the past month, I have really been struggling with having to get this Yellow Book audits. But what my experience is, is I never dreamed that would hit us. That never ever crossed my mind because for 12 or 13 years, I've never dealt with that. We've never had that. And it would have never happened if we had received our vehicles in the in the correct fiscal year, right. which was beyond our control, but guess who doesn't care? They don't care. So uh, I just wanted to share that experience with you. It has been a thank goodness. Um, we have a we have a CPA accountant in Durham, mix it, mix, you know, mix, mm -hmm. uh, Mark System. Yeah, she is, is our is our accountant, and so she, bless her heart, has got all of our stuff. And we have just hired a. We have to get somebody else now. Remember, because you can't use the Same one that you one use. That you, you have to find somebody. And since that we're not uh, ever going to do this again, it's going to cost us twelve thousand dollars. Now, have we budgeted for twelve thousand dollars? Absolutely not. Why would we? Because never in our wildest <laughs> dreams did we think <laughs> that would be over five hundred thousand dollars. So I just wanted to share that little. So if you see on the news an arson, <laughs> you know what happened. No, we are doing, it. and I, this guy that's going to do ours in Durham, uh, he said, "Well, we got an extension." I said, "You need to think we don't have an extension. It's not the word of extension. If we don't have this thing done after and, and get it in within two months, because that's what they actually, you know, we, our funding can lapse. That is not even a thought." Does your board know? Oh my gosh! Well, of course they do, and I, they know how crazy I am. I mean, how, how soon did you have to tell them? Like, you had to call them up like the next day or something. I, oh, in December. She's probably at the front oh, door. No. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you When I found this out, they were emailed immediately. I have a joint, you know, a blood mm. email. All right. And so, I tell, you know. so that's a that's <laughs> a freak. I'm sorry, no, that's that, fine. That's know. a freak accident. But it <laughs> it's a good point for your organization. So you're yes. going after everybody. Oh, I wish I could get that million dollar grant, man. I would love that mm -hmm. or that hundred thousand dollar grant. But sometimes you don't think about what's it going to cost us to get that hundred thousand. Right. Is that going to put you over a threshold where you have to incur more expenses than you planned on incurring? So as board members, how do you make those decisions? How do you know what that threshold is? How do you know what to plan for? Do you just know everything off the bat? No. How do you find out? Just do research. Just do do research, research and what else? Also, in your in your annual meeting and you sh and, and with your board training, that you should go over some of these things with your board. And if, if your board doesn't do that, what's the most important um, thing you do as a board member? Ask a question. Right. You got to ask questions. It's okay not to know. It's not okay not to find out. So ask questions. So, yes. I don't understand what you mean going over the threshold. So with some with some funding agencies. You may have to, if you're over, if your revenues or your expenses are over like 25,000. 25,000 is your first and you have a reporting, you have a reporting um, system that you have to do with the state, if you get state money. So if you get $25,000 or less from the state, then you don't have to worry about doing any kind of reporting. For that it's money. It's minimal. Reporting. Minimal, yeah. right. Between 25,000 and 499,999 dollars, you have another set of reporting that you have to do. And it's um, activities and accomplishments. You need to list your board uh, members. Um, you need to tell them what your mission is. Uh, it's online. It's, 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 not, it's really nothing. Then you take it. Well, it is something. But, but the, something. the point is there's, it's different for each, each funding, funding agency. agency. So what federal funding, different federal agencies mm -hmm. have different requirements, different state, different foundations. So and basically then, your, in, your revenues... <coughs> Or your expenses have to stay in a certain no, percentage. No, you're just level. your revenues. Hadn't got, doesn't that matter for, for that particular expenses. one, but it's different for for yeah. each foundation. Mm -hmm. So you need to know if you're going at, if you're going to um, the Onslow Community Foundation and you're going to ask they don't, don't they don't give out these large amounts, but if you're going to ask for a hundred thousand, you need to know that if you're getting money from United Way, if you increase your revenues or your expenses, because if you get that money, you're going to spend it. So if you increase it by that much. Is United Way going to ask me for more reporting and for more information? Mm -hmm. Are my donors going to expect more information, even if it's not a requirement? If you have individual donors, you know, as an individual donor myself, if an organization has an annual budget of twenty thousand, I have a lot less expectations of reporting than if they have five hundred thousand. 
if they have 500000 I expect them with that large <coughs> amount of money to know a little bit more about their outcomes and how they're spending that money and to, and to be more mature in their financial situation and handling. So you've got to think about those things. So there's not a, a dead money amount for all funders. It's, it's different for each program and each agency and foundation. But you need to think about that. But the only way you're going to know that is to do what? Ask a question. That's not loud. Ask a question. <laughs> well, I'm going to ask you this in the main thing, and you better not show me up and sit around like lumps on the log. You all better scream. So what are the three things you have to do as board members so that you can't, so that you're protected? You ask questions. Well, that's the number one. <laughs> What's the first duty of what? Care. 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 What does that mean? Ask questions. Paying attention. What's the second? Loyalty. What's that mean? Organization. 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 Right. What's the third one? Obedience. That's the one I always have the hard time with because I just don't obey like that law. word obey. I'm too rebellious. Mm -hmm. What's that mean? Obey the law and what else? What else besides the law and the IRS? Bylaws. Your bylaws. How many of you know what your bylaws say? Yeah. You know how many board members you're supposed to have? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what your quorum is? You know how many times you're supposed to meet? Are you required to have an annual meeting? Yes. <laughs> Good job. If there wasn't a table here, I'd run and high five you, but I'm kind of worried. Uh, you know, you every, every board meeting, I recommend I, we have our bylaws. Yeah, that's good. What, that's what you do. The secretary should have it. Good job. Mm -hmm. Good job. All right. Any other questions? I've got three minutes I before Carmela shuts me up. I was going to say, you're going to tell them to do the, um, yes. Okay. <laughs> She's got it all under control. Okay, I knew. I just knew. Oh, Carmela. Will these handouts be available to them on a website or somewhere? Probably on United Way's website. Oh, United, United Way. Yeah. It's where you registered at. Okay. So it probably won't be until next week because this lasts tomorrow. And then. Other experiences on the transition at the moment. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Any other questions that you have? Nope. All right. Well, thank you for being here. I hope this was helpful. Yes, it was.